Fair Dinkum. G'day guys, welcome back to another Fair Dinkum episode. Um, it's only appropriate, I reckon, that like considering the situation that's going on between like Palestine and Israel, the conflict that's currently happening, that we get on um, to Snim, a an activist. Um, also, her family is Palestinian. She's Palestinian by blood as well. Um, to talk to us and enlighten us about the situation that's currently going on. Because we could easily have a discussion ourselves. Um, we don't know what's going on. We only know our opinions and whatnot. So I'll kick it off to you, Tasneem. Yeah, sure. Um, do you want to introduce yourself a little bit? Like, what do you do? Yeah, well, firstly, thanks for having me. Yeah. It's an honour always and a privilege um, to be able to talk to you and, you know, your audience, the young people that you engage. I think it's um, really valuable that you do this and... Yeah, like you should be really proud that, you know, you've opened this space for young people to be curious and and vocal. Yeah, so I wanted to start with that. But um, so, yeah, as you said, I'm Palestinian. I'm a PhD candidate at Monash. And what I look at is um, I do counter storytelling methodology um, using critical race to talk to... Um, politically active Muslims of the 9-11 generation. So that would be my generation, mm. probably not your mm. generation. Yeah. And um, ask them, like, how did they arrive at their politics? Um, what kind of informs their politics? Their journeys of learning <laughs> and becoming political? Yeah. Um, because I think it's really important, like, in the kind of war and terror environment that we live in with... Um, de-radicalization being very hostile and aggressive towards Muslim youth that we're able to capture like creative and alternative ways that we're still able to be political. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess, you know, that's what I do in my research, but yeah. otherwise like I've been involved in Islamic societies at Monash was involved, yeah, like yeah. vice president of the Islamic society Um I've done student for Palestine work, mm -hmm. work with um, Solidarity for Palestine. Um, and also there's a, a collective that I work part of as well to do things in the Muslim community called Muslim Justice Collective. Nice. nice. Yeah. So I think just uh, working like around, so bringing people together and like creating spaces where we can think of how to do radical politics yeah. that's really important it's not necessarily about achieving particular outcomes yeah. but just having that space and holding it and inviting people in learning about the issues that concern us yeah that's kind of what i'm focused so on. what inspired you of like what made you passionate about going down the route of research especially um, in the field of like politics yeah yeah so uh, well like i said so 9-11 generation i think we were already politicized like from yeah. a very young age, but also just being Palestinian, you know, um, is a political identity. So mm -hmm. ever since I was young, like, you know, being really aware of the first intifada and um, at school, I had some really good teachers. Yeah. So who were very political. So they would always open those conversations with us. But um, I was I was curious, I was really interested. Um, I remember I was in Jordan when it was the the second intifada and then after that uh the iraq war happened where you know george bush um invaded iraq yeah, with yeah. the coalition of the willing what's the intifada by the way Just yeah yeah so know. um intifada is basically uh, um it, it's a it means uprising yeah yeah so in uh so Palestinians have had the first intifada in 1987. Mm -hmm. So it's basically a popular uprising where, um, you know, Palestinians all over, it, they go to the streets and they um, confront the Israeli state, Israeli authorities, and they do that continuously until... It, so the, f us the first and second intifada both lasted a few years. So it was a few years of uprising, which is yeah. huge. Yeah. Um, and some people are speaking about what's happening currently as a form of intifada as well. Yeah. 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 Nice, nice, nice. I know Ali's been to Palestine um, and he's had some experience down there. Yeah. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. Um, I'm actually very grateful that my family and I got to go. Because um, one of the crazy things, like I even realized from the, even the, the get go, because we went from like, Ashraf and I was staying in Jordan for a bit. So we went from the border. 
Yeah. We took a bus there and then we had to wait at least like seven hours with my family just yeah. to get through. And this was like, even though we do have Australian passports, you'd think, okay, it would be pretty quick. It would be a s- smooth transition. But I think because having like Arab names, yeah, they wanted to just s- test us psychologically, see how long it'll take. So like just on that, we, I wanted to hear about like s- maybe some experiences you and your family have been through yeah, sure. over the years. Yeah, so um, like I was telling you, well, before we started recording. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I haven't been um, to Palestine. Like I've never stepped foot in Palestine. Mm-hmm. Um, partly because, uh, yeah, like, you know, it's actually dangerous for um, those of us who have been vocal on the issue. Mm. So, you sh- like, it's, uh, it's um, there's regular interrogations there. They, they can hold you up without conviction without like Who's they? without a charge the, the israeli, israeli authorities can yeah. hold you up without a charge yeah you don't know when they'll release you mm. so um especially like when uh, things were a lot more tense there's some people that um yeah they w- they were detained for a while so yeah. we know that about activists even even having a Western passport doesn't necessarily mean that your government is going to vouch for you. Yeah, for mm, sure. That's true. Because I, I, sorry, I remember as well, like in the border, most of us from our family actually got the passes pretty early. Yeah. Which may be an hour in, but then they kept my dad's yeah. because all of a sudden, oh, he's got a similar name to some person in this Middle Eastern country yeah, has done sure. this and that. Yeah. And it's just like, yeah, that sort of thing where it's like, mm. even though you do have a Western passport, it doesn't really do much. No. But was the situation always like this? Because I'm pretty sure there would have been a time when... Like, because when I was doing my research and understanding... And I know me personally as well. Like, um, one thing that I've realised that... Like, I'm not fully aware of what's going on in Palestine. Yeah, sure. And I'm only aware of what's going on when, like, it gets social media coverage. Yeah. Or, and, like, me personally, I've realised, like, especially during Ramadan. Yeah. Like, when, I, I guess, the Israelis and the Palestinians clash head over... I don't know, situations in the masjid or something like that, that I become aware of the situation. Yeah. So for those that also don't know, and I, know, I don't know myself, how yeah. did this all come about, like this clash or this conflict? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we can do like a... There, there was a lot of questions a brief, in there. Like yeah. a brief uh, rundown yeah, of yeah. the situation. Um, yeah, so basically like, um, so before, uh, so Palestine was... Uh, part of the Ottoman Empire. Mm-hmm. And then after World War One, so the victors of World War One, they claimed a lot of um, the uh, a lot of land. And yeah. so Palestine became under the British mandate. As yeah. as did other st- you know, uh, uh, the British Empire was, was like massive, yeah. massive mm-hmm. expansive anyway. But then it was only after World War One that like Palestine fell under the British. Yeah. And then after like by the time it was so, um, there were so the British. Um, they were under a lot of pressure anyway, and like different colonized people seeking independence. Yeah. So they made a deal with um, the Zionist movement that that was already kind of uh, making a case for a um, Jewish homeland. Yeah. So this was uh, before this. This was like almost a hundred years or or one hundred fifty years. Some people say two hundred years before Palestine fell under the British mandate. Okay. Yeah, but um, so, so then anyway, um, the, the Balfour Declaration mm-hmm. happened where the British signed an agreement with the, the Zionist movement, leaders of the Zionist movement, yeah. to hand them over Palestine. And actually, Palestine wasn't the only land that was under consideration. So they were, there were other kind of lands, yeah. lands that they were looking at to... Yeah. Um, be able to establish that ju- that yeah. Jewish homeland. Yeah, yeah. So, so where were the Jews at this point? From the beginning, oh, they just spread uh, all over. Yeah, the world? spread. Yeah. So from the beginning, the idea was a a, a colonial one. Mm-hmm. That's the point. Like the the idea of the Jewish homeland came from a Zionist colonial uh, uh, project. Yeah, for mm-hmm. sure. Right. So, um, yeah. Then, so in 1948, by that time, of course, we know that the Holocaust occurred. Um, Jewish people, you know, yep. they were victimized. They, w- they were, yeah, like the, it was genocidal mm-hmm. uh, violence inflicted mm. upon them. Yeah. All of this. Um, and that became the case 
So the United Nations, other states around the world, United Nations also established. The decision was made that basically um, the state of Israel would be established. Yeah, yeah. And the In state Palestinian land. Yeah, on Palestinian land. Yeah, and that the state of Israel would be um, declared like a legitimate state. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. under the United Nations. Yeah. So that's that's kind of where, yeah, a lot of this begins. So with the establishment of the state of Israel, yeah. there was this um, process of uh, annihilation. Yeah. So trying to exterminate the Palestinian people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so that's where we saw the Nakba, the ethnic cleansing of yeah. Palestinians. So from the get, the idea wasn't for them to live together. It was more to get rid of the Palestinians so that uh, the Jews could live there? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So that's what I mean. It was a, from the beginning a Zionist settler colonial project. So oh. it's about uh, establishing a Jewish homeland. Yeah. Mm. A Jewish homeland free of the Palestinian people. Yeah, for sure. But the thing is, it's not that odd compared to what um, was already occurring So mm -hmm. in, the, in this colonial era. So yeah. if we think about Australia, similarly, like, you know, British invasion yeah. mm. and then settlement. Think about South United Africa. States. South Africa, a little bit different, but mm. yeah, like also, um, yeah, but um, so yeah, apartheid South Africa. So colon so what was happening around in mm -hmm. the colonies, really, um, Israel was a kind of a product yeah. of that sim those similar logics, mm -hmm. those similar colonial logics. Yeah. Um, except w with this one, it's kind of a, a Jewish supremacist state. Yeah. Compared to, let's say, Australia, which is a white supremacist yeah, yeah, um, state. Yeah. And where are we now in that whole situation? Because obviously, with the with the Jew settlement at that time, obviously that conflict has been happening over and over again. Do you know what I mean? And like I was saying, like at certain points we hear about it, and certain points we yeah, don't hear sure. about it. Like I remember the last time that I probably heard about it, like in proper detail, was like 2014. Yeah. Um, like I remember during Ramadan and there was like there was some missiles coming through and all that kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah, um, yeah, And also you always see these like intifadas, I guess, these uprisings and yeah. this situation. Um, so where are we at with the conflict? Do you know what I mean? Um, yeah, so given, given like obviously when, when Israel was established, um, Palestinian, so there, even before the, it was declared, so before 1948, even in the 1930s, yeah. when uh, Palestinians, Muslims, um, you know, Arabs, uh, uh, Christian, Palestinians all kind of realized mm -hmm. the what's happening, that this Balfour Declaration. People um, were fighting the British and fighting Zionist militias. Yeah. Um, so there was that uh, already. So, But Arab states ha were starting to gain their independence from the British. So yeah. this was like an anti-colonial time, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So those armies, uh, you know, they, they kind of interfered in the situation in a way yep. that meant that the Zionist um, project yep. couldn't claim all of Palestinian land. Yep, yep, so yep. that's part of why we are, that's part of why we're in this situation that we're at. And, w and we talk about 1948 borders, 1967 borders, yeah. talk about Gaza, West Bank, yep. occupied territory, yep. you know, East Jerusalem, West Jerusalem because of these histories. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But it, these histories ultimately they're about like this conquering mm -hmm. right and mm -hmm. uh, and it's uh, the international community kind of defines who has which right but Pal what palestinians say is actually you know all of historic palestine yeah. none of that is legitimately um non like it, none of that is legitimately given up so similar to how indigenous people in Australia say that sovereignty has never been ceded, mm -hmm. that basically mean that they they're they're sovereign people mm -hmm. over this land. Yeah. They didn't give it up willingly. Yeah. So mm -hmm. the colonizer has no consent yeah. to claim that land. Mm -hmm. So that's w that's basically the root of the friction. Yeah. Like uh, there we have um, Zionist settlers who uh, want to dispossess, annihilate, yeah. um, uh, and and continue a project uh, that has no room for the Palestinian. Mm. So the Palestinian is either subhuman or non-human or non-existent. Yeah. And so there are different options. So some people put forward the two-state solution. Yep. Two-state solution, uh, according to 
1967 borders. Yeah, yeah. So in 60 so 48 Israel claimed some of the land, mm -hmm. but then in in 1967 they conquered the whole or, or like annexed yeah. other regions. Mm -hmm. So in 67 they annexed Gaza yeah, and yeah. they annexed the West Bank. Mm -hmm. So they those weren't under Israeli rule up to until then. Was that based off of the whole international dividing? You know, when the whole situation was happening where because of the conflict and the yeah. friction that was happening, it was so strong that they settled for like division, like the the Palestinians will live here and the Israels would, uh, so the Jews would live in a yeah. certain state. Yeah, so that was 1948. Okay, yeah. But then after that, yeah. Israel broke even the internationally recognized borders. Yeah. So uh, there were internationally recognized borders that, uh, but in 1967, Israel annexed land that wasn't internationally recognized. Yeah. So, so Gaza sure. was under the management of Egypt, actually. Yeah. And the West Bank was under the management of Jordan. Yeah. In 1967, that's when Israel claimed both those lands. Yeah, yeah. So the two-state solution is kind of a, well, a lot of us consider it a weak one. Yeah. But it basically talks about um, Israel withdrawing its occupation of Gaza and West Bank and mm -hmm. allowing full... So that would be the Palestinian state. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but they haven't stuck to that, though. Because I've, like, I've seen photos yeah. of like, like the whole state of like Palestine slowly, like after the, yeah. the dividing, or after the division, slowly Israel's like combated and taken over more of land that wasn't belonging to them from the get-go. Yeah, so th there's always like land theft, land, uh, land grabs, but also the building of... Um, settlements yeah. and why we call them illegal settlements mm -hmm. goes back to that history of the borders. So I illegal according to international law that yeah. these settlements are illegal. So what happens is basically settlers decide to claim that land and mm -hmm. they build a settlement there, like a whole entire neighborhood on yeah. there. That's considered illegal mm -hmm. internationally. Yeah, internationally. Yeah. So but what? Yeah, go go. I was gonna say since like since they're illegal. Illegal settlements. Can't, what's the, like? I don't get what the point of the United Nations is. So that's yeah. why I'm a bit confused. Like, can't they like do something about these illegal settlements? Yeah. So um, again, like this history is really interesting because what the United Nations did is it recognized certain rights mm -hmm. because it was an anti-colonial time. Mm -hmm. So you know there was a pan-Arabism pan at the time mm -hmm. and pa pan-Islamism, yeah. right? So it w So they couldn't just claim that land the way that for example australia was claimed yeah right uh, when australia was claimed that was a time when that was okay yeah but mm. uh, when palestine uh, you know became a colony yeah. that was post holocaust yeah. that was a moment where the world was saying never again mm -hmm. right so to oh, okay. to kind of so the united nations became like the new facade like yeah. the the new kind of uh, with like civilizational yeah. face in a way, yeah. where the West said that oh we don't we don't do these colonial aggressions anymore, and we we are a liberal democratic West. Yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of where the United Nations comes in. So the United Nations recognizes the right of return for Palestinians. Mm -hmm. It also recognizes um, the right of any oppressed group to um, self defense, mm -hmm. any occupied people to self defense. So that's part of why people still do refer to United Nations yeah. resolutions. But are they really effective, though? Um, it's important that those rights are upheld. Yep. But of course, like we talk about Israeli impunity mm -hmm. and like the way that Israel gets away with these crimes is because, yeah, like uh, you know, uh, the United Nations recognizes the Israeli state. So mm -hmm. we can't turn to a body like the United Nations to dismantle a yeah. settler colony. Yeah, but uh, I mean almost like from the like the illegal settlement point of perspective. Yeah, yeah. Like like the land has already been divided, yet the Israels go into a Palestinian land. Like I saw um, one video on social media the other day of this um, this this guy from New York. It was like a New York Jew who went back to um, it's called Palestine, and he was taking another lady's home. Do you know yeah. what I mean? And he, she goes to him, why are you taking my home? This is my home. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and it was I saw probably, that. you saw that yeah, video, it went yeah? viral, yeah. And I yeah. was confused about that situation, how easily they could just go in someone else's house and or land and yeah. then just say, I have to take it from you. Why? Because someone else is going to take it from you. Yeah, Do you know what I mean? For sure. So where does the United Nations, like... Yeah, so this I mean is related to, yeah, like what we mean by this, like, impunity. But if you think about it, I mean, the KKK in the US, you know... Th th this was also part of their history, like, you know, the, the Jim Crow era was, uh, like, 
you know, ruthless. It was brutal. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, it's a similar kind of thing. Um, even till today, uh, if you look at the way, you know, white supremacist terror occurs in the United States, you see similar forms of entitlement. Yep. Mm. A- and that's what we saw with that settler, like the Ju- the Jewish Zionist settler in Palestine. Yeah. He He's acting from a place of entitlement that I'm going to take your home because I can, yeah. and also because you don't exist. Mm. Like, so it's it's a similar kind of thing. Like, it's it, it, it has this kind of, uh, like, what we call a death drive. Yeah, um, a death drive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, but um, I think you know when when you think about it, like uh, the United Nations, it it has no teeth, mm. and it also. Um, in a way, it enables this to go on because, okay, so the United Nations condemns it mm-hmm. and then the the world turns its back. Mm-hmm. So in a way, the condemnation yeah. um, kind of suppresses p- the anger and suppresses the 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 momentum. The, the situation, yeah. Yeah. I, I realised that very early on in the situation where, like, f- I think for a whole week or something, this situation was occurring and it didn't get the, the media coverage or the social media coverage that we expected it to. And even though the situation at the start, it was probably as bad as, as it was now, until like social media got involved or like the world news got involved, we didn't really see some sort of change. And it, to an extent also, it like you said, it suppressed the situation that was happening to like the Palestinians. Yeah, so From we saw on. that the um, media coverage started when... Um, Hamas launched the rockets into the like Israeli t- um, areas. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So we and yeah, that so that's yeah, that's how it is as well. Like, yeah. um, obviously there are a lot of actors complicit. There's a political class, but also the media. You know, we we talk about like educational institutions as well that uphold uh, Zionist narratives, and yeah. and and that's a big part of this as well. Mm. So, you know. Th- Zionism as an ideology, you know, for, for for Palestinians, we see it as a colonial ideology, a racist ideology, yeah. um, you know, one one that advocates apartheid, one that uh, mm. we consider Israel built on the genocide of Palestinians, mm-hmm. but that's not the narr- that's not the dominant narrative. So, mm-hmm. like, it's a it's a battle over over narrative. It's yeah. a battle over story. Yeah, yeah, really. yeah. yeah. So could you just give it like a quick, a brief explanation of Hamas? Because to be honest, myself, <laughs> even I hear it a lot, but then yeah. I can't really explain to somebody else. Yeah, what it sure. Is. And also other parties that are involved. Yeah. So um, I mean, so Palestinians have different factions. Like there are different uh, political uh, organizing efforts there. Mm. So we have some that are left leaning. Yeah. Some some that are like liberal leaning. Yeah. Um, so we have the Palestinian Liberation Organization or the Pal- PLO. Um, we also have Hamas. So Hamas is Islamist leaning. So that's the discourse. That's the kind of uh, world view that it carries. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and yeah, it emerged. Um, so it's linked to the Muslim Brotherhood. So Muslim Brotherhood also an organization that is political and community. Yeah. Oriented yeah. so across, uh, well, it started in Egypt, but it's across it's the across. the Muslim world. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, so you can think of it in that way. But of course, um, uh, both the PLO and and Hamas, they both have been um, considered uh, for some of the violence that they partake in been considered terrorist groups. Yeah. So yeah. the PLO with like a plane hijackings, that's like much earlier. And some uh, like in Lebanon as well, they, yeah. were, they were active and against Hamas Israel. Is in con- they're in control of uh, Palestine at the moment, aren't they? Um, n- no, so... Who is in control? Because you've got like obviously yeah, yeah. the S- idea for the, the Israels. Yeah, so with, ha- uh, with Hamas, what happened was... Um, as Palestinians had an election yep. in, uh, I think, probably 2005. Mm-hmm. And uh, so it was between the Palestinian Authority, yep. who are more like Fatah-leaning, yep. or they are Fatah, and then you have the Hamas. So they both ran for mm-hmm. elections. Yep. And so Hamas won in Gaza. 
So Hamas since then has been the government in Gaza. Yeah. Uh, so like I told you, Gaza is um, occupied by Israel, Currently. but it's not part of the, the Israeli thing. state. Yeah. So that's why it's confusing because Israel doesn't. So it's an occupation, but yeah. it's also governed by Hamas. Yeah, yeah. So it's an illegal occupation. Yeah, because what happened was uh, in uh, one of the outcomes of the Second Intifada, mm -hmm. because Palestinians fought really, really hard and, and there was a lot of uh, friction there, um, it pushed Israel to withdraw mm -hmm. from Gaza. Yep. So then uh, the elections happened mm -hmm. and Hamas won. Yep, yep. So since Hamas won those elections, what has happened is that uh, Israel, with the support of the West and, w and the international community, have imposed a siege on Gaza to punish Palestinians for voting for Hamas. Mm -hmm, for sure. So Palestinians have been collectively punished yep. um, for that. So we call that the blockade some, uh, and some term it an open-air prison. I don't know if you've, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, you've yeah. Heard, heard that, that term. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Recently yeah. I've heard it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So open-air open prison, uh, basically as it describes, is because you can't get out and you can't get in. Yeah. Yeah. But also like, you know, basics like food... Um, Israel controls the electricity. They only have, for about 15 mm. years, you know, they've only been able to have uh, electricity for a couple of hours a day. Yep. It even led Palestinians to build tunnels, underground tunnels, mm. yep. that Israel says are terrorist tunnels or terrorist funneling tunnels. Yep. But the, w the Palestinians, when they built these tunnels, it was between Gaza and Egypt so that they can get supplies from underneath. From Egypt. Even just uh, supplies to build like bricks and and homes after the the way that Israel you know the carpet bombing that it does so you, you know there's a carpet bombing but then you, you can't rebuild because you're not allowed to bring any yeah. anything in but yeah i mean there's creativity happening in Gaza as well and and the thing is like the situation you can't take it out of its context like yep. th there are always reasons and interests at play right so uh, if you think about violence, there's always a motivation there. Mm -hmm. So um, sometimes the way people talk about Gaza, they, they talk about it as though like the Israeli state is just, uh, you know, being aggressive for no reason, yeah. which doesn't help. Like I think we need to understand why it is that certain things are happening, like yeah. th the logic of the Israeli state, okay. right? So what is the reason for so occupying Gaza then? So part, yeah, so part of like imposing this siege but also these bombardments etc yeah. is to pr uh, palestinian to set palestinians up against each other so yeah. uh, hamas democratically elected yeah the the ask is basically for palestinians to abandon whatever hamas stands for and of course not hamas it's not really about hamas particularly yeah. but it's about uh, what different Palestinian groups stand for. Mm -hmm. So they're like the PA engages in the peace agreements. Mm -hmm. So it accepts Israeli sovereignty. Yeah. It um, The PA kind of, a lot of Palestinians consider it that it's sold out, like it's sold, sold Palestine in some way, you know. Mm -hmm. um, the PA also um, uses the, uses Palestinian police to suppress Palestinian uh, uh, you know, organizers and activists, mm. things like this. So that also led Palestinians to obviously move more towards yeah. uh, towards Hamas as as like a as a support or like yeah as a as, as as one one actor that yeah. that hasn't um you know uh, that hasn't sold out in the way that PA has. Even though there there are a lot of criticisms of it as well, and mm -hmm. you know not everyone agrees on that politics. But the idea that you know uh, collectively punishing Palestinians in this way yeah. is not just about murdering or, or killing or s making Palestinians suffer. It ultimately goes back to the idea of making Palestinians submit. Yeah, right? for, sure, for sure. So that's what you need to think about. And that's why, like you see with this ceasefire, a lot of Palestinians celebrating mm -hmm. because they're saying, well, you know, you, you, you've you killed like over 200 of us. Mm -hmm. You've uh, like d demolished so many homes, etc. But we're still standing. We're still here. Yeah. <laughs> we're still here and you, what are you going to do? Mm. Like, what are you going to do about us? Mm, yeah. We, w Your project your is a failed project, right? Yeah, for sure.
So that's what they're saying. And that, yeah, that's yeah. a big part of it. Um, so I was going to ask you, so would you consider like the two state scenario or is that solution, would it be a reasonable solution, would you say? And well, if so, like yeah. if not, then what would you say would be sort of like a, like a good resolution for this whole situation? I know it's a, like a heavy yeah. question <laughs> Yeah, us. it is. Um, I mean, huh? <laughs> yeah, it's a big. It's. Uh, I think it's a big question. Because obviously, this has been going on. It's for a worth while. engaging yeah. with, right? Yeah. And I know it's a conversation that like not many people want to go into and all that yeah, kind of stuff because yeah. it's obviously a bit of a touchy conversation. But like at the end of the day, like this situation will continue to happen, and we're going to see it happen. So yeah. it's like, what would be a solution to the end of this? Because I know myself personally, like I don't want to wake up like in a month or so after this ceasefire yeah. and see another situation where like. Muslim women and young kids yeah. are being on the streets and they're being murdered and all that kind of stuff, all because illegal occupation or illegal settlement. Do you know what I mean? So what sort of solution can we have going forward? Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. I feel like the, the the general public and the world have, have come to an idea or realisation that, like, we're tired of this. Do you yeah. know what I mean? And I think I really mm. realised this recently. Yeah. Like, I remember, like, first of all, like, like the Black Lives Matter situation with the whole George Floyd yeah. death. Like, yeah. Black Lives Matter and deaths and all that kind of stuff were happening for a hot minute. It's been happening. Do you know what I mean? But until the George Floyd situation, yeah, did it really, like, gather attention. Yeah. So I think also with this si similar, like, Israeli situation, until, I don't know what sparked it. Like, was it the Sheikh, Sheikh Jarrah situation, wasn't it? Mm. Uh, Sheikh Jarrah. I, yeah. don't know, I didn't even say that properly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, when they were illegally occupying or taking their homes. So it's like, what is the solution going forward? I know I went on a bit of a rant. Like, uh, I don't want to yeah, see this no, happen I, again. Yeah, I know I people don't want to see yeah. this happen again either. Yeah, yeah. But I think we should be a bit ca careful as well about th this, like, need to act within a certain amount yeah. of time. Because I think, like, if you look at any colonial power, um, it took many, many years for, for the colonised to be able to arrive at like freedom or even independence like if you look at india if you look at algeria like colonial struggles i mean it hasn't been a hundred years in palestine i know it's long and like obviously for me as a palestinian it's heart-wrenching yeah for sure mm. but it, if you look at it within that history like even australia is 200 years and indigenous people are still resisting yeah you know um fighting for sovereignty yeah. and governance so and basic rights yeah, well, not just rights, but ac but actual like liberation. Yeah, for like sure. For govern, like to be able to have self determination and govern their own lives, yeah. not have to live under like a white supremacist mm. um, yeah. colonial infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So I think this similar thing, like in Palestine, how are you going to have a two state solution when uh, when the Israeli state doesn't abide by? By any, <laughs> you yeah, know, exactly. norms, by any mm. expectations, by any morality. Mm -hmm. So there's like a, a really important saying, which is like, you know, you, you can't appeal to the morality of your oppressor. Um, I'll find it for you later. Mm. But like, mm. that's the idea, right? Yeah. Right. So as long as you keep trying to appeal to the morality of, you know, a group that doesn't see your humanity. Yeah then you're not really going to get very far. No, no, 100%. And similar with the George Floyd, I think, you know, Black Lives Matter, like, builds on a long legacy of black radicalism, black struggle, like Malcolm X, mm. of course, um, and before him, many mm -hmm. others, like the slave, you know, slave mm -hmm. riots and... Yeah, yeah, for sure. And all of that. But... um. S yeah, similarly, like what we saw the George Floyd situation is people saying um, we're going to take matters into our own hands yep. because there's no justice coming from the state. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, they, you know, there was the, uh, of course, like a President Obama mm -hmm. and that didn't lead to any progress no, on, on racial justice. No, it didn't. Right. So people saw that and I think that radicalized many people towards take yeah like i said taking matters into their own hands try so a more revolutionary uh moment mm -hmm. we see that in palestine we see that in the u.s even in australia if you if you went to like the indigenous day protests just even like seven years ago mm -hmm. there used to be maybe a thousand two thousand people mostly indigenous that's it now it's yeah it's an event it's massive it's it's, it's huge event. like yeah. it shuts down the whole city like i remember at one of the invasion day 
uh, protest. It was the first time that the inv- the our invasion day, like the the group, all of us, we it was the first time that we actually walked through the Australia Day parade. Yeah. Um, because we had that kind of number, so the Australia Day parade used to happen at the same time. I- at the same time, but yeah, yeah. now, of course, like yeah, they. Yeah. Like I think those little wins are really important. Like mm-hmm. the um, Victorian government can't even do that anymore because yeah. everyone is out there. Everyone's speaking about Invasion Day. Everyone's yeah. showing up for Invasion Day. Yeah. That Australia Day is like this little drop, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, like it's it's getting bigger and bigger. More people can like because of the consistency of like just raising awareness. Yeah, that's what I wanted to ask about. Like, what? Because you said taking like things in, like taking action in your own way as well. And obviously us living in Australia, we want to do something about it. Yeah. Whereas you can start with the social media influence by like just sharing uh, like on your stories or whatever, showing other people. But what else do you think we can do? Is it boycotting, you know, certain companies or yeah. what else would you think we can do from Australia? Boycotting one is an interesting one. Yeah, yeah. it is. Because I also realised that it became a topic of like debate as well. Um, like is it's effectiveness. Same with like protests as well. Like is it really effective? Yeah. Does it really do much for the Palestinian people or the Palestinian cause? Sorry, that's a yeah. question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think like obviously there's no one answer or yeah. one one way, mm. but uh, like the I think the answer is in in struggle, like yeah. in, in a, a continued ongoing struggle um, that is anti-colonial. Mm-hmm. So what that what that would look like, of course, that evolves, it transforms according to different locations, times, places. Um, but yeah, I mean. What we saw happen with this particular situation, right, is in Sheikh Jarrah, there w- w- there's about a thousand people who are threatened with expulsion. Mm-hmm. So um, this is a big part of, it's part of like an ongoing situation where um, yeah. settler organizations, actually some of them working in the US, yeah. they're, they're Zionist settler organizations. They've been doing these like it's an effort they put in a lot of resources using the israeli judiciary to try and and get palestinians out of jerusalem yeah yeah yeah, so we call that there's a name for it which is like the judaization yeah judaization of jerusalem so trying to it's part of like making it jewish yeah for sure erasing all of its um, Palestinian heritage, including its Islamic heritage, right? For sure. Yeah. So th- that's part of the colonial violence too, mm-hmm. because um, any any colonial um, state, mm-hmm. it 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 has it history as its enemy. Mm-hmm. For sure. Right. 100%. To be able to sustain itself, it needs to. It's built on myths. So similar kind of like with Australia, we have different myths. Only recently people started to say, oh, yeah, like indigenous people. And uh, so like terra nullius isn't yeah. as uh, strong. Like people are saying, yes, indigenous people were the original owners of the land. Yeah. But like th- it was Australia was founded on the myth of terra nullius, exactly. right? So yeah. if we think about like what's effective, um, boycotts, the boycott divestment sanctions movement is more recent yeah. and but it has the consensus of the Palestinian uh, people. So uh, a number of Palestinian organizations all united to found or, or to put forward that as a solution. So boycott, um, basically uh, any kind of Israeli... Um, uh, is, yeah, so to boycott Israel, mm-hmm. like any company that is uh, complicit in the violence against the Palestinians, the aggression Supporting. against the Palestinians... Um, but also cult- involves cultural boycott, academic boycott. Yeah. So Israeli, um, you know, sporting. Yeah, culture. Uh, yeah, anything cult- that they really support. You know, uh, culture means like if there's a, a a singer, for example, you know, not getting, not mm-hmm. um, yeah. going to Israel to perform. Yeah. Things like this, right? Uh, so boycott, divestment. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's kind of similar. And then sanctions. So that's the ultimate one mm-hmm. um, where it's making the case similar to South Africa yep. mm-hmm. where saying the worlds are going to impose sanctions on Israel mm-hmm. until Israel upholds certain... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Le- Has there been some sanctions? 
Uh, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. I don't think we're going to see that a- anytime soon. Mm-hmm. I mean, some people do po- have hopes in that, but for me, I just feel like who who's going to impose these sanctions? Like, is the U.S. going to impose them when the U.S. is also complicit in yeah. in different crimes against humanity? Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. You know, like um, if you look at the drone the killings of the drone wars of the you know that the u.s has committed just in afghanistan this is this is even just in the past few years mm-hmm. i mean they're they're in the hundreds yeah yeah for sure so how who's gonna hold who to account exactly exactly. so it's hard yeah. but i get the, i i think making the case for it is really important though yeah, yeah, yeah. because that's f- that's educational like the more you make the case the more people kind of come 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 around come yeah. behind it yeah. well i think with even maybe like with the sanction thing like in the last couple of days obviously now we're at a ceasefire yeah um like the pressure that countries like turkey and for example, Pakistan put on the the Israel government. You know, what I mean, uh, along with Egypt as well. I thought that was like a massive, like effort in like creating a ceasefire. Uh, I don't know. So to a degree, though, I'd say that was effective. You know, that they might have not put sanctions on them. Yeah, you know yeah. I mean, I mean th- there's there's always that, but like, um, you know, those. If you think about it, like the kind of pressure they applied, it was m- mostly voc like verbal yeah, right yeah. but they uh, like turkey has um trade deals with israel yeah, yeah. like well, if we're talking about sanctions yeah. um it, w- it would cut those deals yeah or um one thing it could do is like shut down its embassy like th- there are some uh, countries where israel doesn't have an embassy even until now you mm-hmm. know there are some countries that uh, if you have an israeli passport you can't enter Mm-hmm, yeah, so yeah. that goes mm-hmm. back to that history I told you of like pan Arabism, pan Islamism, where, yeah. where uh, you know there was more like uh, gathering mm-hmm. around this idea that we're not going to recognize Israeli sovereignty. Yeah. But but s- uh, now we're living in a time of normalization. Mm-hmm. So uh, one uh, one state after the other in the w- in the region is recognizing Israel, and the worst of it we saw with the UAE. Mm-hmm. Like I'm sure you guys saw the uh, UAE recognize, uh, uh, like yeah. Now there's flights between them. There's uh, in deals between UAE and the Israels. Yeah, the Israelites? yeah, and okay. th- that only happened last year. Okay, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think it was last year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. UAE's make been making deals with everyone. That's one thing for yeah. sure. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I know. And yeah, but Trump, yeah, yeah, with Trump, Trump in, uh, made sure it happens. And if you think about it, so since 1948, yeah. Israel wasn't able to do that until now so it just shows you the weak position that we're actually in as as like a uh, an ummah or as as just in the region uh, as a people in the region Uh, that could only happen now because uh, because of the rise of the far right around the world Mm -hmm. there's lots to hope for but it's also very scary time that we're living in it is is. yeah Yeah. social media has been a big help wouldn't you say like as in like the pressure that social media has created on like a global scale yeah, yeah. Uh, mm. Yeah, definitely. Like, a lot more people are aware of it. Yeah. Mm. So we're seeing that lead to... Um, but also kind of like solidarity, uh, grassroots solidarity uh, amongst um, black and brown people, for mm. example, in the US, but also in the UK with Corbyn, mm. you know, how he, uh, Palestine was a big part of his campaign. Mm-hmm. So we haven't really seen that here in Australia, yeah. where Palestine is central to party politics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But in the U uh, in the US, for example, you have Ilhan Omar, you have Rashida Taleb, who's Palestinian. Mm-hmm. You have like AOC and the rest of the squad. But also like Bernie Sanders, they're really putting forward uh, Palestine. Uh, um, and so social media, but also that they interact with each other yeah. to shift the narrative on Palestine. The, the, the narrative, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, but to talk about um, the um, the what's it called the um, the fact that colonial states are the ones backing the the whole um, generation like of an Israeli state. And yeah. um, I read somewhere that somebody goes, no, no, no. But I read somewhere it goes um, the fact that they're complicit with the situation. It kind of it reveals their guilt for their past because then they'll have to be held accountable for what they did in the past themselves. So, yeah. for example, America. Yeah, they can't really go against a state like that who they know is committing an apartheid, like a regime, yeah? Yeah. yeah. So they, they, for example, they can't come in and go, oh, what you're doing here is, is wrong, but look at the Native Americans. Yeah. And then same thing with Australia. That's why those type of countries are on that, on that side of the fence. So yeah. 
to see it develop on that a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So, that I mean, if you see, like, Australia and Israel, they always say that they have a close affinity, a friendship, yep. like, yep. A, and a shared culture. <laughs> so, a lot of us say, yeah, like, that shared culture is, uh, you know, racism. That mm. shared culture is, yeah. uh, uh, like, a supremacist ideology yeah um but of that's not what they're referring to of course they're referring to like western civilizational like uh, kind of uh, creating that hierarchy between who's superior and who's inferior yeah right but um yeah uh, uh, a state so the ones you've mentioned australia canada new zealand um the u.s uh, and others they're what we call settler colonial states mm -hmm. so uh, we have yeah settlers who uh, whose presence um has hap like it, it it exists um with the goal of annihilating the indigenous people mm -hmm. of that land yep. so uh, even though indi like settler colonies are at different uh, stages mm. so um the massacres that you're seeing in palestine that's because palestine is m a newer in yeah. its history, yeah, like yeah. younger yeah, settler yeah. colony, whereas Australia is a much more advanced settler colony. Yeah. Oh, well, so the genocide here is still g ongoing, right? Mm -hmm. So if you look at black deaths in custody here, you know, there was about 400, uh, over 400 deaths in custody yeah. in th in the past 30 years. Mm -hmm. So since the Royal Commission mm -hmm. into deaths in custody where the Australian government committed to no more deaths in custody, there, was, uh, there were a lot of recommendations that were done, a lot of effort actually from indigenous um, people as well as many experts and, co and scholars to kind of prevent any more deaths in custody. But since then, so this year is 30 years since the uh, since that Royal Commission, there's been over 400 deaths in custody, right? Mm -hmm. So these these are people who, uh, I mean, th these deaths are preventative. Yeah, for sure. If, if the state wanted to prevent them. But, but they're the major way that indigenous people today uh, are being annihilated. Mm. Yeah, 100%. So 100%. Just going know. back to the, like, quickly the Sheikh Jarrah thing. Yeah. Um, one thing I didn't understand with the whole situation was why did this conflict or, like, that situation specifically, like, because it constantly happens with us knowing, without us knowing, yeah? Yeah. So why did this blow out of proportion compared to the other illegal settlements? Um, so there's a few th different things. So in Jerus Jerusalem particularly... Um, this this expulsion in Sheikh Jarrah, it's a neighborhood. So it's different to land theft. Yep. Of course, land theft should cause a lot of outcry and, and all yep. of that. But but there's something different about Jerusalem and the old city where, you know, there's been generations living there. Yep. And then to remove them from their homes in this kind of like very sinister way, yep. uh, displace them, um, uh, what we call population transfer yep. and then replace them with settlers i think that really like it's, it's very striking it's struck with a lot of people yeah 100 percent. um but also in in palestine i mean you have to think about like covid so there's like an apartheid vac like a vaccine apartheid so yep. basically almost 60 uh, percent of israelis have been vaccinated that they're they're back their lives back to normal and the only palestinians that have really been vaccinated are those who work yeah. uh, in israeli areas gotcha. so that israelis aren't infected yeah but like no vaccines entered into gaza wow right um the hospital supplies aren't allowed into gaza like yeah. because of the blockade if you think about you know even the west bank like palestinians are denied even to that level of uh, you know this is what we're talking about like mm. that level of hostile aggressive subjugation you know you can't do that to a people you can't. and then expect that they're just what they're gonna Complicit, do nothing yeah. they're gonna just mm, yeah. you know like take it yeah yeah 100 yeah, percent. on top of that like um i remember having a conversation about this prior to all of it happening and there was this one tweet that Sohail sent in the group chat was speaking about which was in terms of the aid that goes into what do you call it palestine to help the palestinian people yeah. And apparently, like seventy-two percent of that aid doesn't really reach them at all. Yeah, you know what I mean. And they, the effect of the situation becomes twice over in terms of they're already suffering from oppression within, and they don't have it. And on top of that, their Israel's uh, benefiting from the aid that should have been theirs. Yeah, you know. Yeah. What I mean? So, like, I was going to lead into another question there. So, 
what can we do to benefit the people in like in Palestine? Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, can we donate sure. to them? And I know also like recently there was a situation where like, for example, on social media, people were sharing around um, that donation. Yeah. I don't know if you could boys seen and stuff. Like there was this donation that was being sent around. It's like if you were to share this on your story, like one cent would go on to, would one cent would go to like Islamic relief or Palestinian relief over in Palestine. I think later on what happened was it was a scam. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So it's like if the m- if the aid that we send to them physically over to in <laughs> yeah. Palestine doesn't reach them, do you know what I mean? And online when we try donating to them, yeah, it yeah. becomes a scam. What is effective at really at the end of the day? Um, well, there are some really legitimate organizations. So I think like, yeah, you you, you should donate to ones that are, that have a good name. Yeah. And don't just find them on social media. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's tough. Yeah. But also I feel like, you know, with everything that we've discussed, like... Uh, it's clear that it's not a humanitarian solution that's required, right? It's a political so- solution. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because as much funds as you want to like pour in, yeah. firstly, as you said, like I- Israel is the occupying power. The, yeah. the Palestinians aren't going to find any relief I- in in that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We need political solutions, and and they're they're quite tangible. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're not that you know. It, uh, um, what we're talking about is dismantling. Um, Israeli state structures, Mm -hmm. right? Um, Of course, that's going to take a long time. But what we mean by that is that, you know, it it can't continue on being uh, like a Jewish-only state. No, it can't. Right? Uh, And it can't be a state where Palestinians are inferior and Jewish people are superior. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So it's about changing those structures. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. there, are, of course, there are, there are limits to to certain gains, like the civil rights movement in the U.S. It it made certain gains on racial justice. So, yeah, like you know, the segregation was abolished. Mm-hmm. Before that, slavery was abolished. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, African Americans are considered citizens, but then there's still continuing. Yeah. You know, still racial subjugation. Still to this day. Yeah, so that's yeah. why you see a movement like George Floyd is talking about abolish the police, mm-hmm. abolish, you, you know, abolish even the settler colony. Um, none of that will occur without strong, fierce, persistent pressure from yeah. from all of us. Yeah. And that's where, like, sol- something we can really do is solidarity. Yep. So, of course, like co- having conversations like this, being aware of what's going on and our place within it. Yeah, is another big one. Yeah. Like Protest is another w- thing. Because who's yeah. gonna, uh, whose work is this? Like, obviously, yeah. who's going to do this? It's, uh, it's It has to be us. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> you for know, sure. N- uh, the point I'm trying to get at is that no, no like, external big power is going to come and fix the situation. Yeah, yeah. And money is not going to fix the situation, you know. There are, so, like, with Sheikh Jarrah, for example, they called for a general strike just, like, like on last Tuesday, yeah. that's one. Strikes are really effective. Mm-hmm. If you think about it, of course, it's not. It's a settler colony, but it's a capitalist state as well. Yeah, yeah. So a general strike for a state that relies and is dependent on Palestinian workers. Yeah. You know, that's a way to hit back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, it, hitting back doesn't have to mean like you need the biggest army in the world or something. That's not what we're talking about. Like a huge confrontation between. Yeah between militaries it's yeah. essentially just showing your solidarity at the end of the day yeah i think that's one thing i actually realized over the last week when um and he hit me when i saw this i know i use instagram as a, like a massive reference to a lot yeah, of things that's cool. but there was this one person that put up a post about like selective activism mm. you know what i mean about being silent on certain situations and then picking and choosing what to voice your opinion on yeah you know what i mean and then the post the one of the last questions was was in regards to because obviously this situation with going on with Palestine and Israel is going to be going on for a while. Do you know what I mean? And like you said, in the grand world of things, like it w- we're at the start of it. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. like for example, in America, the whole racial segregation, all that kind of stuff, is still going to this day. People are still fighting. Yeah, the for ghettos. Yeah, yeah, they're still fighting for their rights and whatnot. So one of the last things or the lines on that post said, so like in ten to fifteen years or something like that, when your kid comes home to you and says to you, "Hey, what happened in Palestine in twenty twenty one?" Or what happened, like, in that situation? Why were these kids dying? Like, what happened to the people in Sheikh Jarrah? Why did, were illegal yeah. settlements happening? It's like, how could have this happened? That was the question. And then the, the, he ended off by saying, 
that you allowed it to happen. Do you know yeah. what I mean? By you being silent on the situation, you're not raising awareness. Do you yeah. know what I mean? And I guess after that, I realized like simply just speaking about the situation because there's one person out there, like for example, like I have a group of friends that don't know things about it. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And me like putting a post up there or saying something like enlightens them and we yeah. don't know what the effect of them further saying something. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so co- yeah, I agree completely. I think education is really powerful. Mm-hmm. I, I know it sounds cliche, but like, <laughs> yeah. you know, critical education. Not just like regurgitating things or, you know, like brainwashing ourselves or whatever. Like, yeah. we're not trying to like do that. But just a critical education where we have this consciousness yeah. to to uh, the way the world works and a consciousness to politics. That's really powerful. Mm-hmm. And that's something that... W- you know, there's so, there are so many things uh, set up to deny people that, yeah. right? So if you think about the way, you know, uh, what is emitted uh, in terms of what gets covered by the media, but also curriculum, etc., yeah. you you're expected to not to not be woke. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure, for sure, or educated on certain situations. Yeah, yeah. Like with so like education is really powerful. Like even with the Instagram things, like there's been. Posts that have been deleted, yeah, and been removed, censored, censored, yeah. and all that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, so and, and also like in pa- uh, in terms of Palestine, uh, there there are legal battles now across the Western world to make um, anything that is anti-Zionist mm-hmm. um, a, a crime through through changing the definition of anti-Semitism. So th- these are this shows you how dangerous it it's is. Tough. To like to 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 Israel, yeah. uh, Israel sees danger in what we're doing here. Just 100%. even talking about yeah. the issue, yeah, yeah. because th- they're trying to make this illegal. Anytime that you see a power trying to prohibit something, yeah. that means there's something in that that is, you know, yeah, yeah, subversive yeah. Or, or there's some kind of resistance in it. So uh, they try to like crack yeah. down on it. Yeah, you yeah. see that a lot on Twitter and stuff, like with. Just like speaking out, sometimes you're labelled as anti-Semitic mm. and whatnot. I think we just have to value the small victories as well, and actually just like accept because it's a process as well. I think because some people, like you were saying, you know, so selective activism. It's like you have the opportunity to share that post so other people can see it, but then people think, "Oh no, what's that going to do?" Yeah, it's like we just need to actually appreciate what your what your move can actually do to other people. Yeah, yeah. Just but I think things. there's definitely lots more that can be done. So, like, to break the siege on Gaza, for example, w- something that was really cool was uh, the Freedom uh, Flotilla. Um, so, these were basically ships coming from uh, some Europe. There were some coming out of Turkey, other states. Th- there's one that uh, w- went from Australia, I think even recently. So, people actually going on ships and trying to um, uh, navigate to, to reach Gaza. Mm-hmm. Mm. And so, t- you're trying to break through the military blockade. Yeah. So doing these kinds of things, of course, and then people watching the situation and and putting that pressure on Israel yeah. to because Israel, you know, it's n- uh, if you think about it, Israel also wants to sustain its reputation. Like it mm. says that it's the only democratic country in uh, in the Middle East. It yeah. considers itself this liberal, entitled, progressive, yeah. you know, nation. So the freedom flotilla, uh, if they try to break into, uh, break in, yeah, and, look. and then Israel attacks them, yeah, that's a that's terrible. Yeah, Th- yeah, yeah. So it's about shaming, uh, shaming in that way, bring a spotlighting that yeah. in a way. That's massive. I, d- I, d- I didn't yeah. know about that. Yeah. Th- so there's stuff like that, but yeah. the thing is, it doesn't happen enough because there's a general se- uh, kind of sentiment, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. unfortunately, that. We can't do anything about yeah, yeah, yeah. all this. That it's it's too overpowering or something, and mm-hmm. I, that really upsets me because we we're giving up our power. Yeah, for sure. You yeah, know? yeah, people don't value their one percent. Like yeah. the one percent really matters at the end of the day. But yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Did you have any last questions, Ali? Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go for it. Shoot. Say so why speaking out against Israel isn't Zionism? Sorry, anti-Semitism. So Say again. So why speaking out against Israel is an anti-Semitism? Yeah. All right, so from one of our guests, his name is Suhail. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> one yeah. of the questions like, why is it speaking out against Zionism is an anti-Semitism? No, Israel. Against Israel. the state of Israel, speaking out against them, why isn't it anti-Semitism? Yeah, yeah. What he said. <laughs> so, so yeah, like I mentioned, so there, there's a definition mm-hmm. that's being uh, proposed 
that tries to change the definition of anti-Semitism to include criticism of Israel. Mm -hmm. So, of course, a lot of people around the world trying to fight that say that, like, that's outrageous. Mm -hmm. Like, how can criticism of a state be a form of racism? Yeah, yeah. So, it's, it's about like that. Yeah, like, you know, m make it, doing both things. So, it's saying what is um, Zionism yeah. and defining it as a colonial ideology. Yeah. That's what we're opposed to. And also defining um, anti-Semitism and, and, and being clear on what is anti-Semitism and, and affirming uh, our commitment to, to you know, yeah. uh, like I think holo definitely Holocaust denial is a form of anti-Semitism and that's... For sure. That's very prevalent, you yeah, know? Yeah, 100%, 100%. So it's, it's uh, yeah, it's a battle. It, and it's very touchy as well, because, like, even on, like, um, like even in America, like Ilhan Omar, when you mentioned it the other day, yeah. when she was speaking out against Israel or whatever, she got she got cancelled to a degree yeah. because of her statements against Israel. It's like, where, what can you say and what can't you say, you know, yeah. on yeah. on a global scale? For sure. Um, but, yeah, any other last questions? <laughs> no, I just, like, these actually just a lot to take in because... There yeah. can be days as well, like when you're looking on social media, looking at what's happening in Palestine, because like you consume so much on social media, you you obviously become empathetic when you see it, but then next you, once you see something else, you kind of forget. Mm. So that's why I feel like yeah, yeah, it's, it's kind of taking action in that moment. Like you know, you get the opportunity to donate. Okay, do it then. That can kind of make that one percent and yeah. make that change. But I think that's why it's important to be organized. Yeah. To be part of a collective, not just, you know, because that's part of like the, you know, a w one way to su uh, to repress is to make us these individualized, atomized consumers who yeah. who feel like, you know, that just you and your little sphere. I mean, like if we're living that impact. way, mm -hmm. uh, that's a colonial way of being, yeah. right? Mm. We, we and we won't get anywhere. You won't get yeah. anywhere that way. So no. it's about like breaking away from those modes yeah. and, and trying to inhabit other modes of how to be, how to connect with each other. No. That's part of the fight as well. 100%, 100%. Yeah. Well, thank you, Tasneem, for coming <laughs> on to you. a Fair Dinkum um, episode. We really appreciate it. Thanks for it. having me. And honestly, like the best part of all of this is just like you said before on the podcast, it's have raising that awareness and having that conversation. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I think that's cool. what like people might ask, like, why did you do this episode? Do you know what I mean? And the why behind it is like, like giving awareness to the situations that's going on. Do you know what I mean? If we can yeah. have the conversation, then anyone can really have the conversation. Yeah, um, absolutely. So thanks for enlightening us. Do you, is there anywhere people can find you if they uh, yeah. want to reach out, say a question? I know yeah, I'm sure. You can, Twitter, um, you're pretty big on Twitter. Yeah, you can find me on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you can put my uh, put handle in Beautiful. In yeah, we'll thing. put it in yeah. the description, inshallah. Yeah, yeah, cool. You can come to the protests. Oh, yeah, 100%. You'll see me there. <laughs> there's, there's one happening tomorrow. When yeah. this episode comes out, it would have happened two days ago. Yeah, that's but right. Yeah. Uh, so too easy. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, make sure you guys, make sure you guys like, share, and subscribe. Um, share it around and share it around. And yeah, peace.